During the decommissioning of a nuclear power plant, there's a great number of surveys that need to be conducted. First, to understand the radiological status of the site and determine what needs to be decontaminated, and then at the end, whether the decontamination has been successful. These surveys that I just mentioned require a great deal of labor to conduct them and schedule for the plant. The EPRI demonstration that was conducted looked to cut down on the amount of labor that was required. So to cut down on the labor, EPRI developed an automatically operating robot which would take the surveys without operating intervention. Additionally, we use radiation detectors which give you better information than previously used ones. What brought us to this uh, demonstration was that EPRI looked at a lot of the tasks that were done during decommissioning and determined and, and looked at which ones required a great deal of labor. One of the ones that was top on that list was the site characterization final static survey activities. The first step of the EPRI project was to look at the available technologies out in the industry to make sure we weren't reinventing the wheel, so to speak. The results of that survey was there was no system available out in the industry to do what we wanted to do. So we then looked and uh, found a few things. We actually found a robot owned by EPRI which performed the functions that we needed. So we decided to marry that EPRI-owned robot uh, with some industry-available radiation detectors to come with the system requirements that we needed. The detectors that are used are two standard industry sodium iodide detectors. They have the capability to collect uh, radionuclide information which the system will analyze and actually give nuclide-specific results. It collects spectrum so that they analyze every three seconds during the operation of the robot, and then additionally, we analyze it for 15 seconds to improve the statistics of the results. To make sure that the system operated properly in the field, we assembled the detectors, the mounting apparatus to the robot at the Marion Technologies Facility in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. The demonstration was conducted at the Kiwani Nuclear Power Plant facility in Wisconsin. The Kiwani plant in Wisconsin has been shut down for five years and is in a, currently in a safe storage condition. What that means is that the systems have been drained, many de-energized, and the plant is waiting to be decommissioned at a later date. The plant actually volunteered to the, do the demonstration and the site staff was very helpful throughout the demonstration. The demonstration was conducted at two types of areas in the, on the site. One was a land area where very low activity material had been spread, and a second was inside the, build, the auxiliary building at the Kiwani site. And these different areas were chosen because they had the potential to have contamination on the floors in the facility areas, and also had relatively low background, which would be the situation you'd have during the decommissioning. So at the Kiwani site, at this current status, the systems are still on the, in the site. So what we did is we, one of the things we used in the demonstration was how background and radioactivity from the systems that still were in place affected the ability to conduct the survey. Indoor areas were first mapped by the vehicle's onboard navigation system. Navigation destination and turning points were next plotted on the map created by the vehicle's navigation system. The vehicle next followed the navigation pass while collecting gamma nuclide spectra every three seconds. Heat maps are created with this data as illustrated here. As can be seen on the heat maps, hot spots are shown which were subsequently investigated and located using a cadmium zinc telluride system which was also part of the EPRI demonstration. Unlike the indoor surveys, for outdoor surveys, the mapping step is not required. The system utilizes aerial maps downloaded from the internet on which navigation points are first plotted. The vehicle follows the navigation path while collecting gamma nuclide spectra every three seconds as it did on the indoor survey. As with the indoor survey, the radiation survey data is plotted on a heat map. The results of the heat map show a hot spot which was subsequently investigated using the CZT system similar to what was done for the indoor hotspot. The demonstration at Kiwani showed that the system could conduct autonomous surveys, that is, surveys that are conducted without operating intervention. The demonstration at Kiwani showed that the system could perform site characterization surveys and potentially final status surveys with sufficient sensitivity. For building areas, the system was able to locate hotspots within the plant that required remediation. For exterior land areas, the system was able to locate hotspots, which was subsequently investigated and determined to be naturally occurring radioactive material. 
The system gave superior results in that it performed actual radionuclide specific analysis as opposed to the typical values, which are normally just gross activity. In addition to providing superior radioactive survey results, the system also showed that these surveys could be performed without operator intervention, therefore saving labor during the decommissioning.